some whimsical talk today because we are talking to Catherine Harrell who has a beautiful style. Catherine, how would you describe your style? I mean, other than beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I would say my style is whimsical, uh, joyful, colorful, um, and playful. How did you get to this? I mean, I think, I mean, looking at your work, which, which I include in these videos, you can see that right away. Uh, and so you think, okay, she must have, she's like just held on to this playfulness. But I find that that might not be true. I, you know, I, I could take you and I, I could probably chat for an hour about this, but I'll try to condense it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, in college, you know, I was like most of us, I, I grew up an artsy kid. Um, but in college, um, I majored in graphic design. and. I, there's something missing. I mean, I, I liked the creative parts, but you know, there was, the, I always felt there was something missing. So I paused for a little bit and tried to figure out, you know, what I want to do. And during my pause, my school opened up an illustration program. So I jumped back in immediately mm -hmm. and I felt like going to class every day was like eating candy. You know, I was in my element of illustration. Um, and uh, after in college, I kind of dabbled in a lot of stuff, but I did a lot of fine art. You know, I did a lot of like photorealistic paintings. Um, and it wasn't until afterwards that I I just somehow I got a call one day from um, someone at Carter's and I, I'm in Atlanta and the Car Carter's headquarters is here. So I jumped on that. I was fresh out of college and I, I got an internship in, in the art department and um, and it was, it just landed in my lap, but that, that was a turning point for me. That was just like, wow, these people do this and it's their job. And this is like, you know, just fun and exciting and silly. And, you know, I get to draw a bear eating pancakes, you know, and it goes on <laughs> and pajamas and that's, I, and I'm getting money for that. You know, it just was this eye opener of like, oh, you can have fun with this. You know, you can, you you don't, art doesn't have to be so serious. You know, you can tap into your childhood imagination and bring up your, your ideas that you thought were too silly or, you know, you wouldn't be taken seriously, you know, no, this is, this is real. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. So I think that was a big turning point of, okay, you can do this for a living. So, yeah. Yeah. I, and I think so many of us start with the realistic approach Right. like validate our craft absolutely right, right. And, and and then you open another door and what's validated is something that feels like that's how would you even describe that feeling I mean going from oh, one gosh. way to another. <laughs> I mean yeah it's it's really hard to even um to even to put into words how freeing you know that is just 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 uh um and I think another thing that helps is seeing other artists out there that are, you know, that like this person's doing it too. I can totally do this. I can do my own, you know? Um, so that was, that was fun. And, but that was, that was kind of an opening an eye opening for me of, you know, you can do this for fun and it's okay. And you can be taken seriously and have fun. Well, I've had that feeling looking at your work because I think I'm playful. And then I look at yours and I'm like, Oh, poof. It just feels like cheating. You just oh. do, do fun stuff all the time. Um, <laughs> but do you feel like uh, you have to keep reminding yourself that this is okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Attempted to change your style, to wander a little bit, to, I don't know, please somebody? Right. No, and that's a great question. Um, so yes. And I think just because of all, you know, so many years of experience of just doing this, I have to keep um, reminding myself that it's okay. And sometimes I do have a roadblock where I'm like, you know, I think we all do. Like, does this matter? Is this relevant? Am I stagnant? You know, I think we all have to have these thoughts. Um, but pushing through them is is a continuous process, I've learned. Like, 
I will always have some form of imposter syndrome that kind of creeps up on me when I, when I least expect it. Um, but I think I always, now that I've had it for so many years, I'm like, okay, there you are again, mm-hmm. you know, hi, mm-hmm. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, you know, and, uh, and it always kind of goes away. So, you know, mm-hmm. I think we always have these hurdles as artists that come up and we just kind of have to push through them. Yeah. And so in talking about, well, now you're not with Carter's anymore. So that about how you're working now. So I've jumped around for a, a couple, you know, I've worked in different um, companies. I worked for Mud Pie Gift for a long time. Um, and that was super fun. And, you know, I did a lot of gift products and children. I was for a while, I was the only artist there. And then um, I had kids. I had two little girls. And um, I got the opportunity to work for Natural Life for a little bit and work from home remotely. And that was, I mean, another uh, place where I could be playful and joyful and colorful, you know, and uh, in a different way. Um, So now I'm just working with an agent um, and I've never licensed my work before this year. So this is a whole new, um, you know, experience with the licensing and learning about how that works and, you know, how to still keep my style, but apply it to paper products and, you know, just different areas. So with licensing, it's more of a contract deal where it's project by project, client by client, you are contributing the art for different products and your agent is finding you that work. She is. Yeah. So she'll find it. And, you know, navigating for my art brain, navigating contracts is always so daunting um, and prices, you know, so I'm so grateful to have a partner who can do the boring, you know, like the, the part that's less appealing to me. Um, and we can both kind of, you know, and you you can stay in your playful place, right? Exactly. (laughs) So far it's, it's been a good, you know, experience. Nice. So how would you, um, I'm sure you can imagine this person that's like, I like her work and I like to be whimsical myself, but um, I just can't seem to stick to it or crack like this inhibition. Like, is there anything that helps you jump over that barrier? Doesn't have to be, you know, a glass of wine, but I'm just thinking like (laughs) sketching or is there something that inspires you or fuels you to work in this way? So, yeah, I, I was in this place myself. Like I was, um, home. I I think I had a real big breakthrough when I was home with a baby and I wasn't working day to day. And and I started thinking, oh man, you know, no one's telling me what to do. I can do whatever I want. You know, you don't have that person that's saying, okay, this is trending. We need to come up with, um, you know, sailboats this year. So I'm like, what do I want to do? And that was a big, um, and it was COVID. And that I think that time where, you know, the world kind of shut down and I really had all this time to think, what do I want to do? And I had this artist, I was listening to this podcast and I had this artist who recommended, um, and, and I think to back up, I was still in the mindset where I thought art was realist. You know, good art was realistic. Good art was this. I wasn't doing good art. I was just doing, you know, and I had, I had this artist who recommended, um, you know, I think it was about finding your style. And she said, go look through the masters, go look through, what do you gravitate towards? What do you like? And I never really asked myself that question of, what do I want to be making on my own? What do I like? And it was playful stuff. And that's what got my attention. And that's what really, you know, um, made me like smile when I was drawing or, you know, like made me chuckle was something that was playful. So I let myself go there. And I, Mm -hmm. I think it comes through practice and experimenting. And some days I do like a, a serious still life. Um, and I, you know, I, I think a lot of it, the, the answer to a lot of these questions is just kind of practicing um, and finding out what lights you up mm-hmm. and going from there, you know? And I think that if, if you're someone who's kind of stuck in that place where, um, you know, like me, where you, you feel playful and that's, 
the kind of stuff that you like looking at, but you also think that serious art is in this other, you know, this, this other thing, um, you know, just kind of pay attention to what's going on inside you and what, what, what makes you excited when you sit down with your art supplies, you know, all preconceived notions aside, what, what makes you happy? What makes you excited to sit down and draw? And funny enough, a lot of the same stuff is the stuff that you um, liked as a kid. I, I'm finding that that comes up a lot. It, you know, yeah. the stuff that you gravitated towards when you were little, when you had no, uh, you know, when you didn't think about imposter syndrome, when you didn't compare yourself to other people, when you had all the freedom in the world is kind of what I come back to. So, you know. Very cool. I, I hope that answered that question. It was long-winded. Sure. No, I think that, um, you know, we start with questions, but really we just want to hear someone speaking to the voices that we're already hearing in our mind. So that's great. I remember, I mean, art has always been my thing too, yeah. but um, well-meaning adults would always say like, oh, I saw this guy, he can draw and like, or paint. Yeah. And it, it was it's like a picture. It's like that thing. And he does it like, it's amazing. And so that was my perception of, yeah, okay, exactly. I guess that's the Mecca of, you know, creating art. Um, and, and I constantly have to shed that I've, it's been a while actually, since I've thought about it, but something that I do think about often is there was a summer I was visiting my mom and I was painting outside and my kids were with me. Uh, and I asked my then, I don't know, six-year-old, do you think I should do this? Or do you think I should do that? Like, what do you think? And he just kind of looked at it and stared at me. And he was like, you can make it whatever you want. It's <laughs> <was> like, yes, <laughs> you, you're right. I was looking for an answer, but you're right. I can make it whatever I want. And that's something that I have to remind myself. Yes. Oh, um, it, kids are so... <laughs> kids can be so wise. Um, I, when I was a kid, I had a, a experience where I was taking this special art class. Um, I was probably in third grade and my mom took me on Saturdays to these little art classes. And this mm -hmm. has stuck with me for years, but, um, kids were asking the teacher, Hey, can we do this? Can we do that? And we had like feathers and beads and glue and paint. And, um, she got so, I mean, she kept answering yes, yes, yes. And she was finally like, guys, there are no rules in art. You can do anything. And so I always, you know, I put that in my pocket and I always try to remind myself, um, there are no rules. This is, this is me, you know, and I, I can do this. I can do that. And sometimes art school gets in the way and I think, oh, rule of thirds, I should be, you know, no art teacher would approve of this, but then I kind of have to you know, you kind of have to throw that out because that kind of is just, the voice is stifling. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I always try to remember there's no rules. I think there's also a tension because there's a difference between creating and editing. And we have to, if, if this is something particularly as a surface designer, as you're doing, create and then hand it off to someone who's like, okay, we got to, you know, sell this thing. And so right. when you get into the design mode, it's, you can't mix those two together. You have to have almost like this duplicitous personality to be able to shift a little bit in how you approach your work, Absolutely. I think. Yeah. This has been so amazing. And I, I can see why you, um, you and a lot of other friends are creating these retreats for artists to just hang. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, so this past um, summer, I connected with uh, three other friends who are artists. Um, one of them I had met once before, uh, Shannon, and the other two I'd never met before, but we had kind of always, um, you know, we met through Instagram. We, we have a, a similar, you know, kind of playful style, all of us, but we met up um, for a weekend and um it was amazing. <laughs> we had the best time. Um, we just got an Airbnb. We um, met in a little town in Indiana. Um, and we, 
we just brought all of our art supplies um, and we just got to it and we, uh, you know, it was fun. We just came up some, sometimes we would come up with prompts. Um, and sometimes, uh, we just did little playful games. Like we went to dinner and brought some colored pencils and we played the telestration, you know, game. And, but it was just, we found it to be, um, so rejuvenating, um, just what we needed. Um, so we've decided to create another retreat and open it up. We have 16 spots. Um, and uh, it's going to be August of 2025, right before school starts um, mm-hmm. for for moms, you know, or anybody who is interested in, in just having more of an art community. Um, so we're going to come together. Um, it's going to be in Kentucky um, at this really uh, interesting um, retreat spot. And I'm not sure exactly what to call it, but the name of the retreat spot is Richwood. Um but it is on this beautiful farmland. Um, everything is included. And, um, but yeah, we're in the works of, of, um, of planning out all the details of that. And when I know more, I'll share more. Um, but I think creating a biggest or, or a bigger um, community, just where artists can get together and have fun and, um, you know, learn from each other, grow from each other and, and have, uh, you know, I don't know, more friends out there, more contacts, more um, just community. So that's kind of the goal. Catherine, it's been so fun to talk to you. And you. I feel like you uh, you can be like a little Jiminy Cricket voice on our shoulder when we are just kind of stuck at the desk. Um, we can play this again and listen to your words. <laughs> so thank you for making the time. Absolutely. It's been so nice chatting with you. Try your hand at this style with a very lesson targeted to do so. Explore this one and so many others in Watercolor Bowl. Try it out for free and learn as much as you can.